Hi everyone, welcome back to the next video in the best practices which an RPA developer can follow during the automation. And today we are going to talk about logging. Take an example. Let's say I am writing an automation in a robotics enterprise framework and the automation has 10, 20, 50, 100 steps. Once the automation is published to the orchestrator, how as a developer I am going to know that what is happening in the automation. Now you might think, why should I worry what is happening in the automation? What happens if you get any kind of exceptions? Let's say you directly got an object reference not set to an instance of an object. Where exactly are you going to debug? Which flow you are going to debug? Which activity you are going to debug? Right? How would you know till what part your automation was successful and which transaction or which part of the automation, which logic is giving that error? So for that, you require something which is called logging or in other words, it is called logs. Whenever you use robotics enterprise framework, a basic level of logging is already done by RE framework for us. How does that look? So if you are looking on the screen, if you see here, I have got this process.xaml log process info started the process. This was done by RE framework for me, right? Now after that, I have written this whole big piece of logic, right? Now let's say while executing the process, I got an exception here or I got an exception here, here, right? How would I as a developer would be able to debug it that which place the automation is not working? right so the best practice here is that you need to ensure that you have sufficient log in your automation so that you can backtrack that what is happening in the automation both in terms of a successful transaction or in case of a failure the other reason for having a log is to have an audit let's say you are working for a client who is in a banking and a financial industry they have an audit and the audit asks you that i want to know what your robot did let's say on 2nd of september now in case if you have logs you can directly show that yes these are the steps which the robot has performed right so that also back up you in terms of audit Whenever we create logs, there are some of the things which you should remember that you should not include any of the sensitive information in the logs. Just like passwords, the path of the file, any currencies, the account number, the CVB codes, right? No sensitive information should be logged into the logs. The log can be simple that we have started reading the Excel file. We have got 100 data, but you should not print what is there in the 100 data, right? So that is the best practice when you should follow. When it comes to generating of the logs, one way is using this guy, which is always creating the logs in the orchestrator, which is using the log message activity. The other way is to create custom logs. So these are the orchestrator logs. The other way you can log the information is by using something which is called custom logs. Now this custom logs are a kind of logs which are generated by the developer, maybe in a form of notepad, maybe in a form of CSV file, Excel file, and they are written to some different place apart from orchestrator. Right. Sometimes you might land in an automation scenarios where you do not have access to the orchestrator. Now, where would you see the logs? Right. So that is the place you want to use something which is called custom logs, which logs all of this logging information into some place outside the orchestrator. Now, how do you create custom logs and why it is important? You can watch this dedicated video, which is available on the channel where I am explaining what is custom logs, how you can create it and how it can be utilized in your automation. So the best practice for today was that we have to ensure we have followed a proper logging mechanism in our automation. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and happy automation. Mm -hmm.